Welcome to the gym. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph absolute value inequalities. Now, um, in just using uh, basic transformations. So when graphing absolute value inequalities, it's going to be just like graphing absolute value equations. If you notice, that's the exact same thing I said when graphing absolute value equa or um, graphing linear inequalities is the same thing as graphing linear equations. So the main important thing we want to do is, especially when you start dealing with the families of functions, is to know the parent graph. Here's the parent equation, y equals absolute value of x. And here's what the parent graph looks like. That basically means without any transformations, that is what our graph is going to look like. Now, what you can see here is, though, I've added a whole bunch of transformations. I'm adding and subtracting numbers to our parent graph. So we need to remember, what does that do to the graph? How does that affect the graph? So, um, I didn't, so the other thing we need to make sure we have, now these don't have an a, so we're just going to y is absolute x minus h plus k. Okay? So you need to make sure you know the transformation equation, where h, remember, shifts your graph left or right, and k shifts your graph up or down. Now, the main important thing that you can also notice is I don't have an l. Let's, let's actually write in a, because it is there. So actually, y equals a, because a is actually going to be a dilation if it's going to um, compress it or stretch it horizontally or vertically, whatever you want to think about it. So you know, a is a part of there. But you notice in all these problems, a is 1. So we're, a is really not going to be affecting our graph. But we do have an h and a k. Now remember, h, um, the best way I think to students to remember it was it's always inside of the function, and it's always the opposite. So when this is minus, you're actually going to be shifting it to the right. When it's plus, you're actually going to be shifting it to the left. But when you have a transformation outside the function k, if it's negative, you go down. And if you're adding, you're going to go up. All right? Now, since we have an a of 1, the parent graph has an a of 1. So what that means is I'm not going to be compressing or stretching my graph at all, meaning how this graph, this v shape, is going to remain the same. All we're simply doing is taking this graph and then moving it left or right or up or down. Okay. So the main important thing to do is to notice what is the vertex. And basically, what you can do with your transformations is just transform the vertex. So at the parent graph, the vertex is at 0, 0. So if I know my transformation, I can just shift the vertex and then redraw the v. Now, what's important about the parent graph of this absolute value graph, it goes up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1 to left 1, up 1 to left 1. So it has linear, um, basically linear uh, slopes here going from the vertex in the positive and in the negative direction. So if my vertex for the parent graph is at 0, 0, here I have a transformation, which I'm going to write, is going to tell me to shift right three units. So instead, I'm going to go from 0, 0, which would be the normal vertex, and I'm going to shift it over three units, 1, 2, 3. Then I'm going to redraw my vertex. Now I'm just going to redraft the, redraft the parent graph, which again is going to be up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. All right, so that's going to be basically going to be the shape of my graph. Now, the next thing I want to do, though, is um, determine if my point is, uh, or determine my boundary lines. Is that going to be solid, or is that going to be dashed? Um, is it going to be a part of the solution or not? So basically, if you remember for linear inequalities, whenever we had a greater than or a less than, it was dashed. That means the point was not a part of the line. Now, you could obviously plug in a test point and to verify that. But um, I'm just going to go through what we've already learned, because we did that for linear inequalities. I'm not going to do it for absolute value, because hopefully you know that, all right, greater than or less than, it's a dashed line. And I kind of want to move on from move on with this video. OK, so now the next thing, though, is using the test point. Now, the test point um, could also be um, very helpful. And <clears throat> again, you know, using the test point can be important. So again, we want to pick a test point that's not on the graph. So the best test point to pick would be 0, 0. So out of 0 is greater than absolute value of 0 minus 3. <clears throat> So the um, 0 minus absolute, um, 0 minus 3 is going to be absolute value of negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So 0 is greater than positive 3. Well, that is false. So if that point is false, that means all the points below my boundary line are going to be false. And all the points above it are going to be true. Okay? And actually, let's just, let's just test. Let me just show you that the boundary line is false as well. Let's pick a point that's on the boundary line, 1, 2, 3. So I'd have, um, so I let's, let's test. So I didn't write test. 
here, I'm testing 0, 0. It's not in line. Here, I'm going to test the point 3, comma 0. So I'm going to do 0 is greater than absolute value of 3 minus 3. Okay, So I have 0 is greater than 3 minus 3 is 0, absolute value is 0. 0 is greater than 0. Well, 0 is not greater than 0. 0 is equal to 0. So therefore, that's false. And therefore, since it's false, that means that boundary line would be dashed. But if you can just remember, greater than or less than, it's always a dashed line. And also notice that since we have the y on the left-hand side and it's isolated, when I have y is greater than, you can see that it's going to be all the y, it's going to be all the points with y values above the line. If it's if it was less than, then it would be all the points with y values that are below the line. So I'll go and show you that one. This one now. But before we get to that, before we even get to shading, we got to know the transformations. Well, here I have absolute value of x plus two. So that's going to tell me to go up two units. So I'm going to up two units. So my vertex started at zero, right? Originally at zero. Then it's going to go up two units. That's all. It's, that's that's the only transformation that's happening. Then I graph the parent graph again. Up one over one. Up one over one. So I'm just going to do two points here. Okay. Now this less than, so it's going to be a dashed line. I know. And then y is less than um, less than absolute value of x plus two. I know that graph is. I know the shading is now going to be below because the y coordinate is below this line. However, if you just want to test it, again, choose a point that's not on the line, which would be 0, 0. And you could do 0 is less than absolute value of 0 plus 2. 0 is less than 2, which is true. Since this point is true, that means all the points below it are true. You notice on here, it was false. So you had to take the points on the opposite side of the inequality would be true. OK, so now we have multiple transformations. Um, Again, I'm just going to go by what the inequality is as well to help me determine the boundary line as well as determine the shading. But the main important thing I want to go over is just reviewing again the transformations. Ooh, I didn't write this down. This is up to. OK, so here are my transformations. I have x plus 4. Remember, that can be rewritten as x minus negative 4. So really, you have a negative 4, so that's going to be shift. So we're going to do shift left 4 and then down 3. So my vertex originally as at 0, 0. It's going to go left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Then again, all you're going to do is just graph the line over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. Okay. Um, since that's greater than or equal to, I know this is going to be a solid graph. And then since it's greater than, it's going to be above this line. So all the points above my inequality, uh, my boundary line, are going to be true. Over here, I have x minus 1. So that's going to tell me to go right 1 and then up 2. So again, my vertex originally for my parent graph is at 0, 0. So that's going to go right 1, up 2. Then now I just graph again my parent graph. So I'll go two points to the left, two points to the right. So I go one, two, so over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one. Now this is less than or equal to, so now this is a solid line as well. Okay, But it's less than or equal to, so again, you could use a test point. Or since my y is isolated and it's on the left side, when it's less than or equal to, that means all the points below it are going to be true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a, a absolute inequality. Thanks.